So I encourage you to look at the results in your business right now. And if you don't like what you see, perhaps, then I would encourage you to go ahead and think about uh, asking yourself this question. What beliefs are holding me back from loving myself fully? I am Gloria Grace Rand, founder of The Love Method and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Live, Love, Engage, how to stop doubting yourself and start being yourself. In this podcast, we share practical advice from a spiritual perspective on how to live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically so you can create a life and business with more impact, influence, and income. Welcome to Live, Love, Engage. Namaste. Business success is overrated when it comes at the expense of self-love. If I've piqued your interest, stick around because we're going to dive into that in just a moment. But first, I want to welcome those of you who are new to Live, Love, Engage. I am Gloria Grace, and I help female entrepreneurs attract more clients with calm, clarity, and confidence by releasing negative thought patterns like self-doubt and poor self-worth. And at the end of every podcast, I always encourage listeners to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically. And so today, I wanted to explore why it is important to love ourselves deeply to succeed as entrepreneurs. So a few days ago, I actually asked my social media followers uh, how important self-love is to business success, and I was surprised and pleased at the responses. So they included things like, it's involved in all my success, or self-love is key to success in life. Uh, another one said, 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, and it will be next to impossible to achieve without it. And what pleased and surprised me was the fact that half of the responses to my poll were from men. <laughs> so I guess I have some self-aware men in, in my, uh, in my among my followers, and that was really great to see. What do we mean by self-love, though, when it comes to business, you know, when, the, when it's in the context of business? Well, self-love means to fully and unconditionally accept yourself for who you are and what you have accomplished so far in your business. Now, some people, they think that self-love means you're selfish or narcissistic. And if taken too far that way, it could be seen that way. But when it's more coming from this real heart-centered loving of yourself as a spiritual being, you're able to set boundaries with family, friends, and clients in particular. And you also are able to demonstrate self-love by prioritizing self-care. Because then when you're getting good rest, you're eating healthy foods, you're exercising, you're making time for fun, you're able to be healthy. And that enables you to run your business with ease. Now, sometimes also people think that uh, another myth about self-love is that, oh, well, you're just going to become lazy and uncreative if you slow down and take the time to heal yourself, to take care of yourself. But I'm going to say that instead, taking time to be still, uh, like through practices, mindfulness practices like meditation, one of my favorites, is actually going to help you to be more creative, spontaneous, intuitive, and inspired. And those are all essential qualities for a successful business. Now, you may be listening to this and thinking, well, I love myself deeply. Uh, that's great. I, you know, I hope you do. And I might invite you to 
think about the times perhaps when you might have been plagued by imposter syndrome, doubting yourself, thinking that you're not as good as someone else in your industry, let's say. Or maybe you're spending time uh, watching, uh, binging on Netflix, shall we say, instead of working on your business, whether that's responding to emails or, or maybe coming up with a whole new campaign for your business. So if that's some of the things that might be going on in your business right now, then you probably love yourself, yes, but maybe not as deeply <laughs> as you thought. And I would like to share another example of how this might show up in your business in another way. And I may have shared this on the podcast in the past, uh, and I know I definitely uh, wrote about it in my book, Live, Love, Engage. My, uh, my older sister, Michaela, was a massage therapist. And one, uh, one year at, around Christmas time, she uh, called me up. She lived in Arizona and I was in Florida. And she called me up and said, Glor, one of my clients wants to give me a thousand dollar bonus, a holiday bonus. And I don't know if I can accept it. Well, my immediate thought at that was like, wow, that is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, gosh, I would love it if someone offered to give me a thousand dollar bonus. I'd be like, thank you very much. So I, you know, was trying to figure out why she was feeling this way. But instead of really diving in that way, I, I thought I would go about it a different way by asking her, well, why do you think <laughs> this client wants you get wants to give you that bonus? You know, have you been giving her, you know, has she been satisfied with your services? Does she refer you to other people? And my sister's like, yeah, yeah, she does all those things. So I said, well, I think that you are going to be doing her a disservice if you don't accept that money, because this is how she wants to show you how much you mean to her. It's a way of really letting my sister know that she really loves her. She appreciates her. And see, my sister was not, didn't really love herself up enough to value her own worth in that moment. And that's why she was doubting whether she should even accept it. So long story short, she did accept the money. And I was very happy that she did it. And I think she was happy as well. So let's, let's look at it from the other side. Now, when you do love yourself, when you really do have that deep self love, then I believe one of the things you're able to do is you are more willing to take risks to step out of your comfort zone in your business. And I'll give you an example from, from me. So when I was writing my book, Live, Love, Engage, I was also at the time giving presentations. Now, at the time, I was still focused more on online marketing because that was what I had been doing in my business. And I remember this one time I was scheduled to, I was attending a networking event for women and I was scheduled to talk about LinkedIn, how to use LinkedIn in your business, which I'd done many times before, talked about. At the same time, I was writing my book and I happened to notice that when the organizer of that event was promoting it, she didn't mention the topic for me that I was gonna be talking about LinkedIn. So people were coming to this network event knowing that I was gonna be the speaker, but they didn't know what I was gonna talk about. And so when I mentioned to this to my coach, I was working with a coach at the time, he encouraged me to talk about the love method, which I was writing about in my book. So I went up to the pr uh, promoter of the, you know, the organizer of the group when I got there and said, is it okay if I, I know you and I had talked that I was gonna talk about LinkedIn, but is it okay if I talk about my book instead in this, this love method? And she said, sure, yeah. So that was the first time I ever talked about it in public. And I was nervous to say the least, but I did it anyway. And I stepped out of my comfort zone. And what was wonderful was that I received positive reactions from the people there. And so that was confirmation for me that I needed to keep going, to keep talking about this, to keep writing about it. And I eventually did publish my book. 
So I encourage you to look at the results in your business right now. And if you don't like what you see, perhaps, then I would encourage you to go ahead and think about uh, asking yourself this question. What beliefs are holding me back from loving myself fully? Because it is very possible that there are some limiting beliefs that you might be holding on to. And I'm going to talk about more of that in a minute, but I want to get to some Let's get let's get practical now. Let's let's talk about the fact that even if you know what actually I'm going to say it this way, even if you feel that you do love yourself and you're you're comfortable but with that you could still enhance that. <laughs> Amp it up a little bit. You know, uh oh I for those of you who have ever seen the movie Spinal Tap, you know, they, they talk about taking it up to 11 <laughs> instead of their speakers. So let's let's do that. Let's let's amp up your self-love practice and, and make it an 11 instead of one, you know, instead of 10 out of 10, let's make it an 11. So how can you do that? One way is to engage in something really simple, which is daily affirmations. You know, telling yourself, speaking to yourself, saying, I love you. In fact, one of the ones that, again, I talk about this in my book, I love the, the late Louise Hay was so amazing. And one of the practices she talked about was this mirror practice where you, she would look at herself in the mirror and she would say, Louise, I love you. Anytime she was in front of a mirror, it could even be in her car when she was looking in the rear view mirror. So I've, I've encouraged my clients to do that as well. And, and they've told me it does feel funny at first. And, and when I started doing it too, it does feel a little weird. But the more you do it, the better you feel about yourself. So I encourage you to, to try that and, and other affirmations. Maybe, in fact, I'll, I have, um, I put together a list of affirmations uh, that you can, actually get from me, if you like, and I'm, I'm going to tell you how to do that in a little bit uh, at the end of the show. So you, you can get those from me for free. The second, the second way that you can sort of amp up your self-love practice, and I mentioned this earlier, is through mindfulness exercises, um, mindful practices like meditation. Meditation is one of my favorites that I do, I make time for every morning. I, and I vary the times that I spend doing it. You know, sometimes I can meditate for an hour. Sometimes I'll meditate for 10 minutes, whatever works for you. And I know I've talked about this on the show before. Meditation looks different for everybody and you have to figure out the way that works best for you. It could be just going for a walk out in nature and spending, spending time in the quiet, you know, listen, listen to the birds, uh, just be, have a, do a walking meditation. I've done, I've done one of those before too, where you're just really mindfully stepping, you know? So there's lots of ways that you can do this to be able to just be still, to really be still and, and know. <laughs> I love that phrase. It's so, it's so powerful. Another way to practice self-love, which I kind of touched on at the beginning too, is that you set boundaries for yourself and learn to say no. No is a complete sentence. I still remember the first time I heard that. I, they turned out to be one of my first clients actually for my copywriting business years ago. They were life coaches. And I went to this presentation where they talked about no is a complete sentence. And we have to say no sometimes, do it kindly, and still be able to have that confidence to say, I would love to help you out, or I would love to do this, but I can't uh, right now be, you know, and you can use a, whatever reason it is, but, but know that you don't have to obligate yourself to doing things for everybody, you know, just because someone asks you to do it. If it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work for you. 
And setting boundaries in your business is so important. I know when I first started my business, I was working seven days a week, which is not practical for the long run. It's at the beginning, sure, you, you may have to do that. But eventually, you need to really come up with good hours and, t and days or when you're going to work because you've got to be able to make time for self-care, as I mentioned earlier. Otherwise, you're going to burn out or you're going to get sick and then you're not going to be good to, to certainly yourself, your clients, your friends, your family. You're not going to be good to anybody that way. So you definitely want to take care of yourself. All right. So we talked about a little bit about self-love and, and, and business and and I think ultimately what, why this is so important, why it's key to business is that, as I mentioned, when, when you love yourself, you're going to take care of yourself. You're going to be, you're going to show up better for your clients, for your team members. If you, if you have a, a staff working for you, because you on you're honoring yourself you're honoring your value you're understanding it and it's it's so important to be able to do that and that's what i want to talk about in my book uh, and i know i've talked about this on, on prior episodes as well that this is why i'm so passionate about the love method because it is really about helping you to let go of some of these limiting beliefs to be able to open your heart to receive wisdom and love and to value what makes you unique and, and why you are the person that your clients need. And of course, to embrace your divinity and to realize that you are a, an amazing spiritual being. So appreciate yourself. And that's, we come right back to self-love again. So one of the things that I, one of the other tools that I've used to help myself in being able to cultivate self-love, to let go of limiting beliefs, to be able to hone my intuition is through the practice of light language. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, go to my website, <laughs> GloriaRand.com, and I have, I have a whole big uh, page about that right, right at the top. You'll be able to find it. And what, but just to, the, the Cliff Notes version of it, it is a multi-dimensional language that speaks to your soul. And so I typically either speak it or I sing it. And it is something that your left brain won't necessarily understand, but your right brain will get it because it is more of a, a message that, again, that's going to resonate with your soul. So uh, when I do this, I will offer my intention is to let this be something that's going to release whatever is, whatever limiting beliefs, perhaps, that you may have about money that might be holding you back. Or maybe even, you know, we also carry a lot of ancestral wounds in our DNA. I mean, that's, it's, it's been proven. I mean, they have, they have seen that we are, we are carrying some uh, trauma, I guess it might be a better way of saying it in our DNA. So again, this is something that light language can help you with. So if you are listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube somewhere where you're well, not watching on YouTube, you wouldn't be doing that necessarily. But if you're operating machinery, if you're driving a car or you're at the gym or something, pause this, come back to it later. It's, it really is a, it's a very relaxing. So my clients have told me is that it helps them to relax and to let go of stress. So what I would invite you to do right now, is I'm going to share a little bit of that with you right now. So I invite you to, you can close your eyes if you like, and just set the intention that the message that you receive today is going to be for your soul's highest good and for the highest good of all concerned. Oh, not to go yet, 
kushiate aka kahuena awena kui o kaga sakuya no e o kayotu aka kahue o tachi shanyo no kui Akaya tu e kasoku, akaya tu e. I hope that that will help you today and to be able to, uh, like I said, release whatever might be keeping you from really loving yourself as as fully and deeply as source intends for you to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd like to say about that. And I would encourage you today to go out and, or maybe even just this week, to commit to one act of self-love. So we, we mentioned uh, today a couple different ways you can do that. So, so figure out one of them. And uh, also, if you would like to uh, receive my um, list of affirmations. And also when you, you can also sign up for, I offer daily messages of their inspirational messages of love and light. So if you would like to get that, and then if you sign up for my list to do that, then you'll get the free affirmations. You can go to bit.ly. So B I T period or dot whatever L Y <laughs> forward slash love light notes. And that's capital L O V E capital L I G H T capital N O T E S. So just know that the L's and the capital N are capitals. All the rest of those are lowercase. I'll have it in the show notes. Don't sweat it. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll definitely get that out to you. And let's see if there's anything else that I want to mention that's going on in my life or that I think you should know about. You know what? Make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast. I invite you to do that if you haven't done so already. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube as well at Gloria Grace Rand, and you'll be able to do that because I do put these episodes up there as well. So you can you can see them. And oh, one other thing I, I would just say too, is that you can always go back in and re-listen to the podcast to hear that light language message again. And if you would like a personal session with me, I do offer those as well. So you can go to my website and get information about that. All right, I think that's enough of the plugging and the uh, inviting. So I'm going to end this episode for today. And just thank you so much. I really do thank you so much for listening, for watching. And you are why I do this every every week. I really enjoy doing it. So until next time, I invite you to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically. <laughs> <laughs>